Hello everyone, and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 Career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are back in career mode finally, and we are here with the Mars Lander V. We have been testing the Mars Lander G2, which is with the Gemini cabin, but I've decided to replace it with my Vegas cabin, which was a modification on the advanced command pod that was supposed to make the advanced command pod look better, <laughs> because it looks horrible. Uh, but I have made some changes to it, because we I didn't intend to have the ablator built in. The advanced command pod here has ablator built in and so it has a heat shield and everything and we don't need that and I didn't model the Vegas command pod to have a heat shield it has a flat bottom and so I've changed it so that it no longer has a heat shield so it has the heat tolerance of a Gemini cabin but it has all the other features of the advanced command pod including the capacity uh, so removing the ablator brings us to this mass, 1.2 tons, and uh, I've made the unlock cost higher than that of either the Gemini or the advanced command pod because it's nicer. So, <laughs> but its unit cost is the same. Uh, so, yeah, uh, everything else should be the same except I had one quirk I'll mention. But uh, just uh, going through it quickly, you can see the temperature here: 448, 2000. And actually, that's uh, okay. That's matching the original Gemini cabin here, 448 and 2000. This L1, which doesn't cost that much more, and actually costs uh, well, yeah, it doesn't cost that much more. The unit cost costs more than my Vegas, uh, has a higher internal temp. But yeah, so we're going with this. Uh, this is lighter for some reason, but that's because of the advanced command pod, right? Here, uh, the advanced command pod is 1.3468 tons, but that's with 144 units of ablator. Uh, so, uh, see, one, one, 144 kilograms of ablator. Well, you take 144 kilograms off of that, and you get the Vegas, uh, not the Mercury, Vegas command pod's mass. So, uh, that's what we've got there. And remember, the only reason we're using these command pods instead of a lander cabin is because we can't use the lander cabin because it's not ready for re-entry and apparently going through Mars's atmosphere, 1% of Earth's atmosphere, counts as re-entry. So we are using these, but otherwise I'd be using a much lighter cabin. This is one ton only. Uh, but anyway, okay, so not much lighter. But anyway, so this ends up being lighter than the Gemini cabin by point one seven tons and uh, but that doesn't quite explain to me why we end up so much uh, we actually end up quite a bit lighter uh, so if I take this off right now and we have these I no longer have the center engine on the second stage here I removed that and filled in so this tank is just a solid thing uh, without a hole in uh, this is 2.539 tons okay with the parachutes hopefully still configured right uh, let's see Always good to check. I mean, mm, no, they aren't. <laughs> uh, they aren't configured right. Okay, so we want. So that might be the problem. I was wondering where, where the discrepancy was. Okay, now now we're closer to the mass that it was before. This they'd configured right, so. But that never actually got removed from the core. And here it's reading a different mass than over here. So that, that's probably because of the heat shield being dumped. The unlock cost is the cost of the Vegas command pod and the heat shield, I think. So if we take a look at everything compared to the Gemini lander, uh, you can see that's reading 24.8, that's 23.8, and we've got 4,719. We put some extra fuel in the second stage. This has a little bit less delta V, a little bit more mass. But the less mass does allow us to put a cruise stage on top. That won't be too bad. And our controller... Our controller can handle 30 tons. One other quirk that I haven't figured out yet is, for some reason, this has two lithium hydroxide scrubbers. And I've looked at the configurations. I can't find where it's duplicating it. It should only have one. In fact, that, that's all I can do right there. It's got O2 pressure controller and air pump. That it's supposed to have, but I don't know why there's two of those. 
everything else should be the same as the Gemini cabin. Okay, so I've added a cruise stage. It's basically a duplicate of this tank down here. And we've got an AJ-23 Transtar, or AJ-10-151-OMS Transtar. And yeah, that'll give us 276 meters per second for adjustments. Hopefully we're not going to take more than that. Uh, peculiarly, uh, right now with the Transtar at the bottom there, the engineer's report says 27.47 tons, whereas the Delta B stats now reads 27. 6-7 tons, so I'm confused. I put a decoupler there just in case. Uh, I mean, I'm sure with the docking port we could release it, but uh, we'll just make it like that. And so we've got a transfer stage there. Hopefully it doesn't beat out the size of our fairings. And yeah, well, that's what we've got. Of course, we had to add that because we moved the heat shield from the top to the bottom. Now, as far as the controller is concerned, I wanted to see what benefit there might be to going to long-term space habitation era avionics. We've got uh, basically 170 kilograms. That's 124 kilograms. So that would be nicer, but how much... How much would that cost? 12,000. I think that's worth it. I mean, it gives us certainly a boost to our Delta V there. Okay, so a 30-ton controller there, though, you know, in certain circumstances that might not be enough. But for our lander, I don't want anything extra. Everything else can have the extra stuff. So, uh, this is our new lander. And hopefully it doesn't have some other quirk that I don't know about. Of course, we've never put Kerbals inside, so we don't know for sure whether there is some other quirkiness. We've got the ladders that we have. Um, but, yeah, there could be something else that could go wrong. And we'll have to see. We don't have really the space for one of these parabolic antennae. So we'll have to just make sure that we have relay satellites because that antenna is definitely not going to stay out while we do entry into Mars atmosphere. So okay, uh, we need to put this on a launcher. Well, more specifically, we need to edit the ones that we already have, right? We have some that have been constructed. Mars Lander N, Mars Lander N2. So let me try out and see uh, if we can modify those to have this on there, or whether that's even worth it or not. I mean, when we take a look at these other Mars Landers, they were only 21.7 tons. Our new lander is going to be much heavier than this. So that's a problem. But we've got the bigger pad now, so we can make a bigger booster. <laughs> can make a bigger booster. Um, All together is 127,000. It's not necessarily more expensive right here, but if we need more Delta V, then yeah, it's going to be more expensive. You could go to three boosters. How much extra would that cost? Well, a little bit more. 20,000 more. Feel like that's worth it for mission assurance. But then our controller has to be able to take care of this. And if we're going to redo things, we might as well go to the better unit. N10. Oh, I guess I already tooled it. <laughs> okay. I already did the 1800 and I guess it's close enough. Okay. So I already tooled that. 41 days rollout time. That's not good. Well, anyway, I think we'll try this out. So I'm going to save edits. Uh, yeah, we'll unlock the Vegas command pod, the solar rays, the, the ladders, and of course the heat shield and the heat shield decoupler. And I'll edit this one as well. No point having the old ones, they'll just explode. Yeah, and I guess it was calculating the rollout time based on the fact that we have 3,200 people here. So that's harsh. That's harsh. We can get up to 4,000 now, but still. It's not like we're making a huge amount per day. And that's only because I'm carrying this uh, Earth Space Station program along.
once that runs out, we're not going to have as much money unless we pick something else up, and nothing else is super lucrative. This is paying 1.2 million per year. Basically, for the next Mars window, we don't have that available to us. I'm looking for the rollout cost here, 44,000. It's a lot. We probably don't need that much staff around right now. Our window is in October of 2026. I have to check on the training. I want to see that they can actually train for the Vegas command pod, right? Okay, we've got a proficiency for it. That's separate to everything else. That's probably the safest way to go. Well, let's start giving them the proficiency. Uh, he's gonna be gone by... He's gonna retire by the time we've got the mission. Same with Barbell. Probably Thomas is gonna be gone too. But we'll train Thomas. Maybe it'll be an extension. Oh, it's an instantaneous one. Um, I should have said it to something else, but okay. But instantaneous means they don't get an extension to their career either. Science-wise, is there any way we can get the engineers to hurry things up? We've got researcher efficiency upgrades, but... Uh, engineer efficiency upgrade is up here, I suppose. Um, that'll take a little bit more science, but maybe we'll eventually get that. I suppose we might as well be doing something. We'll get the final engineer efficiency upgrade. So after the lander, the next thing that we need is the Mars mission transfer vehicle, the thing that brings our Kerbals over to Mars because they rendezvous with the lander at Mars. So we need... Of course, a lot of life support because of that, and it doesn't seem like we have a water recycler, oddly enough. Um, just going through the entire tech tree, I mean, I mean, I don't mean right now. We have been languishing as far as the life support line is concerned, but that's because it doesn't have much. It has these ISRU units, but I'm not doing ISRU right now. Uh, that could make things easier, of course, if any of these actually work properly. They have some... Curious features like hydrazine production and molten regolith pyrolysis. I don't know, we've got Sabatier process here, but nowhere in here is there a water recycler. And I'm looking up here as well. So that's the problem. We need a water recycler that would make things a lot lighter and sort of a basic bit of life support that actually exists, right? It actually exists and they could just slap it in onto one of these parts or, you know, something that looks like that. They've got a liquef liquefier, a liquefaction array. We just need some something like that. But apparently all this empty space in the life support line does not have that. <laughs> so we've got vacuum scrubber, advanced vacuum scrubber. I suppose that would help. So I'll try and get to the vacuum scrubber and advanced vacuum scrubber. But, yeah, Water Recycler would be high on the wish list right now. So our Mars Mission Hab, or Mars Mission Transfer Vehicle, is like this. It is based on our Mars Station, uh, though it doesn't have the docking port on the tail. It just has one docking port on top, and maybe I'll reason consider that. Maybe I'll slap two of those other ones on the side. It's always helpful to have extra docking ports. Uh, it has room. <laughs> it's uh, it's not as good as I would like it. It has shielding too. I've put 20% of the shielding. That's to bring our interplanetary up to 3 years and 97 days. Without shielding, it's 1 year and 329 days. So that's rough. But uh, the shielding is 15 tons. Which I feel like is overdoing it. But whatever. Um, now... As far as the life support is concerned, nitrogen is four years, but otherwise we're carrying a year and 55 days or so. So it does need to rendezvous with our supplies around Mars, otherwise they're not surviving. Um, but uh, that that is for two Kerbals, I think. Yeah, we've got two Kerbals in. And for the two Kerbals, the stress gives them two years and 215 days. And I don't know if there's any way I can 
expand on that except for our station, which would give them some more room. So they'd have to meet up with the station. If I just put some other... Let's just give them some more space here and see what happens. So another habitation module. It doesn't improve it that much. So that's worrisome. That's ideal living space, and it's only 2 years and 282 days. So what else can we do? Panorama and plants and firm ground. Well, they'll be going to the surface for a little while. Panorama. I guess we need a cupola. There is no cupola. <laughs> There's no cupola. How are they going to get a panorama? Now, the cupola exists in stock. So, did they just not configure it? I think they just didn't configure it. I think they should give us a, the panorama for free if they're going to not configure the cupola, don't you think so? We've got a window. It's close enough. So I think that's a bit of a problem. But, what we're going to do is we're going to send this into orbit around Earth, high orbit outside of the radiation belts and we're going to leave it there and then send cur two kerbals up to it and have them live on it for a little while and see how they do and that is the plan so we we're using the four booster version for the first time of our rocket the Sirius rocket and at this stage we'll boost it high and then this will actually circularize up there with its 1500 meters per second and it'll hang out and then if we decide to use it, we'll just have Kerbal's stock to it and boost it. Uh, the pod that will come over with the Kerbal's for the transfer will also have a transfer stage that will boost it from the high orbit out to you know, planetary space. Uh, that's the plan anyway. And now we would like to have a little bit less mass. If we had a water recycler, we'd save about two tons here. Uh, we'd need some, of course, to get recycled. But also, we save some mass as far as what gets consumed over at Mars. There's just one year's worth. We need three years. So, anyway, that's how that looks. And I've decided to... Uh, we have a service module tank here now that's larger. So that's the bulk of the unlock cost, the tooling costs. And then this tank is sort of new. And I've increased the avionics unit to 50 tons. Um, with the pod... If we wanted to bring the pot along, maybe we need more than that. So I'll just, let's err on the side of caution and go 80 tons. Does that cost a lot more? Not really. Okay, so that's the plan. We're definitely not going to be sending Kerbals in it. Uh, we'll send Kerbals some other way, but yeah. That is going to be launched and then it'll hang out. So we can launch it immediately. We don't have to wait for the window. That's good because of the rollout costs and, well, I mean, rollout time in particular. So radiation, three years. The potential problem is the stress, but I mean, we're hitting the max levels here. Clearly, we are going to have trouble exploring anything beyond cislunar space. <laughs> this, is not, this is not meant for that, but anyway. Lithium hydroxide also we'll have to pick up when we get over to Mars. Alright. So, with all that said, unlock cost one. I don't know. Anyway, we will build one. Cubic octagonal strut. Okay. Okay, so the construction of the Mars mission have has brought us to 101 days before the Mars window. I feel like I should just start rolling out the lander and the, this tug here. Now this tug, let's take a look. Ah yes, this tug is meant to rendezvous with our nuclear stage to help it out. Well, that's a bit complicated, but yeah, we'll have it on pad 2, I guess? Let's see. We definitely want to once again test the lander in the practical way. Not cheating it into orbit or anything. So we're going to... That's going out to B. Okay, let's have a lander start to roll out to A as well. That's gonna take a bit. Uh, in fact, only 10 days before the launch window. <laughs> so, uh, 
Oh, uh, they're both... Okay, so it doesn't help at all to have a second pad, does it? Rolling back. It doesn't help at all to have a second pad. It's not useful. Maybe it cuts some time. No, it doesn't. Okay, well, we'll just do it in sequence then. I suppose I should hire more people. Let's see, what are pad peoples do we have? Let's get those back. It's diminishing returns. Well, anyway, let's get this launched. And we did have Muhammad retire, but Muhammad has done many things already. So that's at pad B. We can roll out to pad A with one of these. Simultaneously. We'll save the time that we would have to take to recondition, I guess, but that's not much. We're just gonna line up with the moon. We're not because we don't have a particular window for this Mars mission hab. And we're not having anybody on board. Interesting that things that are all ready to go into the habitation module. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, so a moonlike orbit for this, and we will see what happens. Uh oh. I can't engage SAS, so something's wrong. I have a controller. Oh, th but, hmm, this version should have had the big uh, control unit at the bottom. It was saved as this size, but maybe I forgot the right size controller? RP1. I don't want to roll back. <laughs> 1300 tons. No. Okay, well, but we've got a pickle here. Because apparently that rolling back, even though it's on pad B and that's rolling out to pad A, it's taking longer time. So maybe we should have just left it there, but can I stop it from rolling back? I need it to stop rolling back. Because it's causing our rollout of the actual missions that are going in like two months to take longer. I need to stop that from being recovered. But there's no apparent way to stop it from being recovered. What if I dismantle ELA-6B right now? <laughs> Is there any way to... I'm gonna try and quit and load again and hope that it's in a better state. <laughs> well, no luck with restarting, and there aren't any backup saves that we can use. Um, so, let's see what rushing can do. It can barely get that thing out in time for the window. So, we'll, we'll at least get that lander launch done. Hopefully. Arbel Kerman has retired. The amount that we're losing is huge. On this rush. Okay. Well. I guess that's how it is. We're just going to get this one done on this window. And again, it's just a test of this lander again. But of course, it's a new lander. I don't know if these rollout times actually conform to reality here. Saying. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle is up, and... Ignition. And launch. Well, launching right at the window. This is the first time we're using the three booster version of the Sirius. Booster is set. Okay, fairing separation. This could certainly complete orbit for us. But uh, we'll let it uh, deorbit and use the two engines that we have slated for that up here. Now that engine should not be happening there. 
Okay, we'll leave it there. And separation. Okay, ignition. Alright, alright. Not great, but should leave us with enough to transfer, hopefully. Okay, yeah, 3,700 meters per second. Takes uh, nine months to get there. Not even at our periapsis or anything, so... Would have been a nice window to send things on. <laughs> Would have been very, very cheap and everything. I don't think rolling something else out, you know, after another month is a good idea, though. 17 minute burn time, though. <laughs> but we have extra Delta V, so it's okay. We can't do it in two burns, because these only have one ignition. Okay, selling fuel down, and ignition. Well, let's get the main antenna out. We really need more relays around Mars, maybe we could launch something like that quickly, but we'd have to build it too. Should have thought of that. Two caught up on the big hab. Okay, we are on escape. Uh, okay, alright, we got something. Oh, it's still a little bit far, but we can deal with that with more minor adjustments and our cruise stage. Okay, well, that seems to be good enough right now. Okay, let's let go of the stage there. And I'll just plot a mid-course correction. Okay, that looks fine. 18.7 meters per second on the mid-course correction, and it gets us uh, to 3.2 degrees inclination with Phobos, and that's a periapsis inside the atmosphere. So that'll be good enough for now. And it is powered, and we'll add that alarm. But I am sorely disappointed. I'll think about whether I want to squeeze in some other mission in this particular window, but we can't get one of the big ones, I don't think. That would be too unlikely. It'll take a month to roll it out, or more than a month to roll it out. And by that time, the window is definitely going to be less accurate. But yeah, I wanted to do more this time. I wanted to get the, the habitat launched as well as this, but the Habitat didn't have the right controller. So, I am going to immediately go back to the Space Center and make sure that we get the right controller on it before I forget. Okay, so now we have an 1800 ton controller, right? Here it has an avionics menu, why doesn't it have it outside? Anyway, it says it's sufficient now. Alright, save edits. But just in case I think I want to launch something else to Mars on this window, I'll hold off here and make up my mind about that. But that is getting modified. It's ready to roll out in a day. So if I decide that we're not going to make more use of this window, we'll just proceed with the Mars mission hab test. And we also have to build our pod that will bring the Kerbals to it and then they can stay. The pod will give them an escape just in case the radiation gets too high or they start trying to kill each other because of the stress. Something like that. All right. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.